Hello everyone, welcome back to another day in this, the clown decade, the decade where things are only going to get worse before they get better. However, despite what the title of this video is about Richard Dawkins lamenting the fact that he's helped kill Christianity, I actually think that there's quite a large white pill here in that many people now seem to realise that the loss of Christianity has actually been detrimental to Britain and largely the rest of the West. And new atheist types all over seem to now start to realise that, well, Nietzsche's phrase, nothing is true, everything is permitted, really does mean that if there is no objective morality, people will believe anything is permitted and they will create their own awful type of their own morality, where we've ended up in a world that seems to be absolutely filled to the brim with pride and envy, which are both sins that are against the Ten Commandments. I mean, for those people that don't know, I am a Christian, specifically a Catholic, but I don't particularly talk much about religious issues at the moment because I always used to think I'll follow my religion, other people can do theirs, hopefully they can, you know, see the light of Christ in their own hearts one day, but it's becoming quite clear to me that no, people actually need quite a shove in the correct direction. Down below you will see a link to a Discord, the Wellington Project Discord. I would suggest going in there because actually Quite a few of us have conversations about religion and we've actually managed to get atheists to start going to church and they themselves have started seeing an active, positive influence of going to church on their life. And if you're going to make any step in the right direction, actively engaging in any sort of Christianity, the most basic of which is going to church on a Sunday, then you are definitely heading in the right direction. But I'm not here to proselytise entirely. I am here to go through what Richard Dawkins has to say about Christianity in Britain and the West. So on Easter Sunday, yesterday, Richard Dawkins guested on Rachel Johnson's show on LBC to talk about Christianity in the West. And so we're going to go through that now. So please take it away, Ms Johnson. What would be your Easter message? Well, I must say I was slightly horrified to hear that Ramadan is being promoted instead. I do think that we we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. So already, I mean, I agree with him that Ramadan should not be being promoted above Easter and above Lent. And he calls himself a cultural Christian, which is what quite a lot of people would call themselves. And, and what this effectively means is um, I'm going to do absolutely everything I think I should do to follow Christ's teaching, apart from the actual thing that matters, which is to have faith in him. Which, you know, I, I completely agree. You can't force yourself to believe something. There is no way I'm ever going to believe, say, that a man can become a woman, despite how much, say, the trans radical activists tell me that they are. There is no way I'm going to start, you know, believing in communism, which effectively is a religion at this point, the amount that they're ignoring facts. Which I know is an ironic thing for me to say during this video, but anyway... The point I'm trying to make here is that Richard Dawkins, pretty much throughout his life, has been putting to work, pen to paper, and going to talks, trying to completely deconstruct the entire faith system of Christianity. And now he's realising that the consequences for that are actually quite dire. He's not quite regretting it, but he is saying, oh, why can't we have all the nice things from Christianity without the silly belief? And the reason is, is because it was the belief that created all this. That is exactly where it all developed. From the time over Easter, as we know, Jesus died on the cross and then resurrected. And then there have been numerous martyrs who in the first century pretty much all died for what they claim to have seen. They say they saw Jesus die on the cross and then get resurrected from the dead. They saw him back to life. That is what they believe and they died for that reason and they made that quite clear and this is well recorded and from there it developed obviously to popes in rome spreading christianity throughout the roman empire to the far reaches of europe into africa into parts of asia as well and it is effectively what the entire western world is based upon until then you get around the 19th century and beyond and people start to deconstruct it. You have all the atheist experiments in Europe in the 20th century, they don't seem to go particularly well. What countries tend to do best? It's the Christian ones. And the problem with Dawkins is, is that he wants all that without the actual core of it. 
And it doesn't quite work, and he doesn't quite realise that. But I suppose he's so old at this point, we're going to have trouble trying to teach him new tricks. But I will let him continue his message. So, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols, and um, I, I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Yes, correct. The Church of England is the state religion. It will hopefully always be the state's religion. And it is where a lot of our culture does stem from. It does stem from Christian charity. It does stem from doing Christian work. I mean, one of the largest things that the Empire did was send out missionaries. I mean, for God's sake, the whole reason that the British Empire finally came round to the idea that slavery was bad was because of the work that Christian sects did. William Wilberforce and the Clapham sect. They put together Christian arguments against slavery and managed to get a petition signed that was over a mile long to Parliament. And eventually, obviously, in 1833, they sign off the Act of Parliament to make slavery illegal in the Empire and in the Atlantic as a whole, because we had dominance in our navy throughout the entire world. And we were actually able to stop slavery because of that. And then when David Livingston managed to get over to East Africa, where it wasn't particularly well explored. He found slavery there, let the British government know, and then they took out slavery in East Africa as well. I, all because of Christianity. And I know what a lot of atheists are going to say. Uh, oh, well, couldn't we just do all this without Christianity? I mean, under Christianity, we had slavery as well. And this is just ignorant of how morals evolve over time. The long and short of it is, is that effectively in Christianity... The laws of man are the laws of man, and you should follow them as much as you can while still being able and actually doing the work to keep the faith in Christ. You know, going to mass, praying, all that sort of thing. So slavery was what Africans did, and it's what other empires did to be part of the Atlantic Triangle. And obviously, you know, it took about 200 years, but Britain became aware of the horrors and, as I say, used Christian arguments to say slavery is illegal, as it had been done in the past. Slavery was illegal in the British Isles since William the Conqueror came over, again, due to Christianity. Alfred the Great, when he was writing the initial common laws of Britain, he basically took it all from Genesis and Exodus. It was all laws from the Old Testament. This is how influential Christianity is. It created our laws. And now we've moved away from that, what laws are we making? Absolutely everyone has to be equal. Oh, if, if men are paid more than women on average, you can sue entire councils for it. it. Nothing to do with Christianity, all to do with this atheist offshoot of liberalism where people don't understand what equality is. We are all equal under God. That does not mean we are equal to each other. Basically, what atheists or Western secularists need to understand is that this is the truest meme I think I've ever seen in my life. What has effectively happened is people like Richard Dawkins have been born into this world that is absolutely dripping in Christianity and Christian morality. He's thinking, I'm smarter than these people because I don't believe in this fairy tale of God, despite, again, the evidence we do have of God. If you want to know about all that, I will let you know of a person I can reference in the end. And they effectively have the hubris to say, no, I could come up with all this morality myself and we could have ended up with all this morality without Christ. Well, we've had that experiment for close to a century at this point, and it appears, no, we actually end up just mass murdering people. You need that faith, I truly do believe this, you need that faith in God to help strengthen that faith in the morality that has been passed down by God and all the generations before us, so that we can actually have what will end up as a perfect world, or as perfect as it can become. Western secularists, however, as this meme points out, it's like, oh, we got to this point without any effort at all. And well, no, it's because of all the generations who did have faith in God and Christ that gave you the moral structure that you see today. And apparently deconstructing Christ actually does deconstruct that moral compass as well. So <laughs> where are you going to go with this, Dawkins? Uh, it's truth that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down. Uh, and I, I'm happy with that, but I would not be happy if, um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I 
count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter if we, certainly if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. I, I can't get over how a man who is touted around as being one of the smartest people in the UK at the moment says something honestly that stupid. He, he is happy that people's faith and belief in Christ is going down. He is happy about that. He's made that quite clear. And yet at the same time, he wants everything that Christians actually maintain to stay in place. He doesn't want the cathedrals to go. He doesn't want another religion to take over. Yet he is happy with the mechanism that will cause exactly that to happen. The destruction of Christianity. And you never know, this realisation might make him say to himself, maybe I should go to church then. It is very strange. Richard Dawkins has tweeted in the past that, you know, he enjoys church bells. He enjoys working on England's green and pleasant land while hearing church bells go off. But he won't do anything to actually help maintain that. I doubt he's ever given money to the Church of England. I doubt he's ever gone to church in his entire adult life. And yet he expects these to just be maintained by people that he effectively doesn't want to exist. He doesn't want Christians to exist. Well, I'm sorry, you're not going to shake my faith. I've seen my life and too many other people's lives get noticeably better by having faith in Christ and by going to church on Sundays. And this is a pattern that's seen throughout most of the world. Pew Research did, did the work a while ago to study how religion actually affects people. And generally, it does seem to make them happier. I, I mean, here's a sample from many countries throughout the world. And it's only in Ecuador and Spain, in this entire, oh no, South Africa as well, in this entire list where non-religious people are more happy than actively religious people. But for the vast majority of countries, and therefore the vast majority of people, being actively religious actually does make you happier. There seems to be something with that. And some people cope and say, oh, well, it's the community aspect and things like that. No, no, it's not, because... These inactive people also go to community centres and do charity work and things like that. It, genuinely, we have a religious shaped hole in us and that needs to be dealt with in one way or another. Otherwise, you are literally going to believe in anything. Anyway, Rachel Johnson moves on to the point that church attendance is indeed crumbling and yet mosques appear to be appearing up all over Europe. And does Richard Dawkins find that to be an issue? Yes, I do really. I mean, I, 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 I don't. I, I have to choose my words carefully. I mean, I, if I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. Well, hopefully, it's not too late, and you can actually make that choice because I think that is going to be the choice in the end. Because atheists, because they don't have a faith, they will probably actually find it easier to just convert to Islam if they feel like they're forced to. And I suppose this is the thing with Christian countries. We've given everyone the choice. And so everyone has chosen to be lazy. And it's just made it far too easy for another religion to take its place. What I'm basically saying to Richard Dawkins is, if you're a cultural Christian anyway, if the only blocker is actually your belief in Christ, the best thing you can do, and to keep churches going, by the way, is just going to church once a week. If you want to keep a church in your area going, Mr Dawkins... Going to it once a week is probably going to be quite a big step to keeping it that way. And if you spend your hour at church there, listening to what is being said, listening to the readings, to the gospel, to the priest's homily, to whatever, you will probably find yourself actively actually thinking about this a bit more and coming at Christianity from an angle that is slightly different from the purely scientific angle. Because if you're trying to come at religion from a purely scientific angle you're always going to be an atheist because you are not going to find any scientific answers there. It is not a scientific subject religion. It is, in fact, the opposite. You need to let your empirical mind go quite a bit because that's all science is. It's empiricism. It's inductive reasoning, whereas religion and Christianity do not rely on that. Uh, so if you rely on that alone, of course you're not going to see anything. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion um, in a way that I think Islam is not. I think you're going to have to explain why you say that. I mean, Richard Dawkins has been cancelled before over his uh, issues with the trans community, so I don't, I don't know why he's trying to pick his words carefully, unless he thinks he's going to be 
you know, having the threat of being beheaded over this, which, you know, as I say, you kill Christianity in the country, another religion's going to take over from it. If it wasn't going to be Islam, it was going to be communism. <laughs> because religion's always going to have to exist. So if you like Christianity, at least try and play the part. Yes, I mean, the the, the, the way women are treated, I mean, Christianity is not great about that. It's had its problems with female vicars and female bishops and things. Yes, but there's quite a difference here, Mr Dawkins, between forcing women to cover up in burqas, not allowing them anywhere by themselves, and even allowing the beating of the women, uh, compared to Christianity that, oh, no, you can't have that particular job, that is literally the job of a man. Which, there's plenty of reasons to actually keep that tradition going. And if you're so bothered about there being women vicars, oh, bully for you, the Church of England has women vicars. Go to a Church of England church. But there's an active hostility to women, which is promoted, I think, by the holy books of Islam. I'm not talking about individual Muslims, who, of course, are quite, quite different. But the, but the doctrines of Islam, the Hadith and the, and the Quran, is fundamentally um, hostile to women, hostile to gays. It, it, over the years, I've heard Richard Dawkins talk about Christianity and really comparing the way he talks about Christianity compared to Islam here. I mean, even here, at no point during his talks about why Christianity is bad, does he have to sugarcoat the, oh, other religions are bad too, by the way. No, he just says Christianity is bad for X, Y, Z reason. As soon as he talks about Islam, it's Christianity has its issues. As I say, a lot of sects don't have the issues he sees anymore anyway. But then he also has to sugarcoat it with individual Muslims. Yeah, they're fine with women. Their religion, though, oof, that, that's very hostile to women. It blows my mind he can say that. Muslims will be following the Quran in general. I mean, for instance, of one of my own anecdotes, a uh, Muslim family recently moved in the area I used to live with my parents. And it was quite noticeable that you would pretty much only see the men outside and going outside the women you would barely see i mean i don't you know you didn't spy on them or anything but the only time you really saw the women were when they were off to mosque you didn't really see them at any other time i don't see how that isn't the individual muslim people following the quran and being hostile to women in richard dawkins mind but i don't get why he can be well no sorry i do completely understand why he feels he can be so hostile to christianity and this is probably why He's actually on the side of having a Christian country more than an Islamic one. Because he knows that he is free to criticise Christianity and effectively just paint all Christians with the same tarnished brush that isn't even within Christian doctrine. Christ was respectful of women. It may sound cringe, but he genuinely was. Especially when compared to Muhammad. And yet, for some reason, Richard Dawkins has to try and equate christianity with islam here uh, what's his equivalence oh you can't have women priests in catholicism say i'm sorry that's much better than what muhammad did to aisha um and uh i find that i like to live in a culturally christian country although i do not believe a single word of the christian faith not to be pedantic but you really don't believe that Christ was alive during a reign of Pontius Pilate in Jerusalem and a reign of Caesar throughout the Roman Empire. The Book of John actually does a pretty good job of getting the historical context all in place for that. You, you, do you not believe that? I mean, I know he obviously is only referring to the supernatural stuff, but it's quite amazing that he calls himself a cultural Christian and within the same sentence decides to say, but I don't believe a single word of the Christian faith. No, no, that's not true. You need to believe in the christian faith to some degree to be a cultural christian otherwise you're not a cultural christian or something completely different I, I mean at this point really the only as i said before the only difference really between richard dawkins and an actual devout christian is the fact that the devout christian goes to church once a week that's pretty much the only tangible difference because it seems to happen to a lot of people they just start going to church and make a habit out of it They'll start believing. It, it may take time, it may even take decades, but the whole point is that if you are trying to find God, he's not going to come to you. You know, if you're the type of person who waits for a sign, you're never going to get one. You have to start putting the effort and work in yourself to start getting 
that almost reciprocative relationship, you know, you, you will be filled with faith. You'll have that relationship with God by doing the basic steps that Jesus himself suggested by going to temple, by praying. I mean, Richard Dawkins meditates for God's sake. The only difference between meditation and praying to God is that you have God on your mind as you're meditating. That seems to be the main difference. But even then, praying's quite hard to do because most people, when they pray, they just think. And praying's a little bit different and it's quite complicated and there's no way I'm going to be able to explain it properly in this video. So we may as well carry on. Just for balance, should we should we say something about fundament, fundamentalist Christians who, you know, we can see abortion rights, reproductive rights being rolled back um, in, in, you know, Republican states in America. So Christianity is still not without its problems when it comes uh, to women. Well, given that half of abortions are probably done against female fetuses, I actually think that it's doing a, a quite a good part for uh, women and girls there, given that it's allowing them to live. But again, abortion rights, this was a very secular morality that was put through in the 20th century. It's a very new, almost acceptable part of life, I I abortion. It's going beyond, really, cultural Christianity if you're trying to fight for abortion, because really, from what I can tell, the whole argument comes down to, well, the woman who is currently pregnant is the ultimate arbiter of whether this child is cared and for and loved or whether it's literally just incinerated to heat a hospital. And, you know, we're talking about human life there. And generally, I know it's a little bit different between Catholicism and other sects. With Catholicism, it's you're not even allowed the morning after pill. That counts as a abortion, given that the embryo is fertilised and it just dies within the womb because it stops being attached to the wall and then there are other people that think well you know a few weeks into the pregnancy when you can start seeing a heartbeat and brain activity well that's when life really starts i mean at the end of the day none of that really matters because what people really come down to is should abortion be allowed for the woman to choose if she wants the baby or not not for if she was raped or if the woman's life is in danger because they are statistically very few of the abortions. That's a completely different issue. No, the main question of the abortion issue is, should a woman have the right to choose in absolutely every case, even when it's effectively just used as contraceptive? And a lot of Christians would say no, because you are abusing the gift of life from God. And if you're abusing that, you are, <laughs> you are just evil. But reframing it as a women's issue, I mean, it really shows us who the deities are these days. The aforementioned... God knows what, just nameless woman. That's the new god of feminism. As with black racial activists, it's the unnamed black person. In fact, it might even be George Floyd for some people. But this is what happens when you lose faith in God. Well, insofar as fundamentalist Christians oppose evolution and think that the world was, was created 6,000 years ago, I mean, that, that is pernicious nonsense, of course. Yeah, I mean, I can understand why people are put off by the uh, Tradcath type people who think, yes, the, the Earth is, it's actually 8,000 years old, I think. But yes, the evolution isn't real. It, it's a weird one. Cringe Walker, who will probably listen to this, he is a person who is basically doing a load of experimentation on, I believe, yeast at the moment. And he's using basic evolutionary principles to try and cause mutations to try and get this yeast to produce a new type of fuel. And while it is artificial selection, I don't know why he can do that and at the same time say that evolution, well, doesn't exist, because he believes that they can mutate. He just doesn't seem to think that the natural selection process really works, which I don't know why he wouldn't, because he's literally selecting what type of yeast gets to be produced right now and i'm not saying he's playing god at all i mean i'm in the belief obviously that evolution and all that's real i mean i did geology at uni i know the earth is 4.567 billion years old and again i think you're asking the wrong question of both the bible and science if you're trying to get them to answer each other you know yeah the bible i can't remember exactly who did it, it was some bishop in ireland worked out that yes if you look at everyone's ages throughout the bible you can work out that Adam and Eve lived about 6,000 years ago. Now, I'm of the opinion 
that Genesis is more a metaphorical myth than it is actual reality, at least when it comes to the origin story, you know, the Garden of Eden and all that. And that is a pretty widely held belief with most Christians. Yes, God did create the earth, but it was all done through natural processes. He just created all the processes to make all the dominoes fall into place to where we're all alive today and where we all, well, Christians at least, thank God for doing that. Fundamentalists, tradcaths, whatever you want to call them on the other hand, yeah, they're crazy. There are even apparently American geologists that just completely reject basic geological principles because they still believe in you know Noah's Ark and that fossils are found at the top of Mount Snowden or whatever because Noah's Ark <laughs> allowed sea creatures to migrate there in 40 days and then obviously when the sea levels came down after 40 days they stayed there and died and ended up in the rock. We know for a fact that none of that happened so how do you square that circle? Well they can't and that's the type of people that Richard Dawkins should really be trying to focus on, but he didn't. He went after Christianity in general, despite the fact that he seems to think that Christianity is actually very, very reasonable. But he's lamenting the fact that he has helped destroy Christianity. And now the Christian hallmarks that we see throughout public life are going. Well, of course they're going. You don't want people to maintain it. Or if you do, you want them to maintain it for, what, a sense of tradition? The reason people have a sense of tradition is, I truly believe this, because of God, because of the shared religion that we all have. If you get rid of that, you know, what, what's happened in the 20, 20th, 21st century, the non-believers are deciding that the best use of their time is to just completely attack British history. I mean, Otto English has recently done a TEDx talk about fake history that I'm going to go through, and it's just going to be nonsense again. But they don't care, because they don't care if they tell lies, they don't care if they're wrong. All that matters to them, all their morality is, is that Britain has done bad things in the past, therefore the British people must be bad, therefore I need to attack them in whatever way I can. Attacking their history, and even the myths of their history, seems to be the best way to do it. Because yes, history does get mythologised. Of course bad things happened in the past, of course Winston Churchill did some bad things. But that's not why people venerate him. They venerate him for the good things he did. But that doesn't matter to these people. Anyway, Rachel Johnson moves on to ask, would it be bad if we had less Christians and more Muslims in the country? Well, yes. Uh, um, I think the king, when he was Prince of Wales, was actually rather sympathetic towards Islam. And one of the problems I felt, um, no, I think it would be a, a terrible thing. Uh, and insofar as Christianity can be seen as a bulwark against Islam, I think it's, it's a very good thing. I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? I, why, Mr. Dawkins, why do you think that your brand of atheism, or atheism in general, to be fair, atheism in general is so bad at actually diminishing the Muslim faith? I can tell you exactly why I think Christianity wasn't great against atheism. I think it's because atheism derived out of Christianity, and a lot of atheists do actually somewhere in them have a sprinkling of the belief in Christ or belief in God. I think it's genuinely impossible to be a true atheist like Richard Dawkins says he is, because there's always that little bit of irrationality in people, because it is irrational to believe in the supernatural. I can completely understand that. There's no rationality behind it. Yet, Richard Dawkins can't actually explain properly why he likes hymns, why he likes seeing cathedrals, why he likes the sound of church bells. He says it's because he, it's what he grew up with and where he feels he belongs. Well, again, <laughs> that's probably Christ calling him. Uh, I, certainly a lot of people would probably say that. I certainly do. Yet he keeps rejecting the call, and now he's actually seeing secular reasons for why we should actually keep Christianity. He doesn't seem to realise that a good secular reason is to keep the cathedrals in place, but now he's seeing another one for, oh, it stops completely anti-secularist ideals of Islam coming in. Why can't you do that? Why can Christians do that? Why are they better at that, Mr Dawkins? I think you need to have a good think about why, and I think your study in evolution will probably help you work out why, especially when it comes to human evolutionary psychology. In Africa, for example, um, where you have missionaries of both faiths operating, um, 
I'm 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 on Team Christian's side as far as that's concerned. So at the very least, Dawkins, just try going to church. Just try it for a month. Go four times in a month and see if you're seeing any improvements in your life. You, I think you would be surprised. I think a lot of people get surprised because you really are sacrificing very little going to church an hour on Sunday morning. It's not that bad to, uh, and a lot of people won't be able to explain it. I know I have trouble explaining it, but to actually improve your life in some way, it does happen. I've seen it happen to other people. I've seen it happen to me. Just give it a go. It's interesting because I sort of thought that you would be more of a Hitchinite, God is not great uh, advocate. But it's interesting to me that you see the value and the force for good of well, the United I mean, Kingdom uh, having a Christian foundation. Yes, but I, I must emphasise that, that I think that, that the, the things that Christians believe are, are actually nonsense. I, I suppose this would be an issue with a more scientifically minded person having constant conversations with fundamentalists. Fundamentalist Christians, they, they really are mainly an American thing. I, I mean, on my old parish, uh, when I lived at my parents, we used to have a Nigerian priest and even he wasn't as fundamentalist as uh, as the americans are i mean he, he was certainly a lot more fire and brimstone with his homilies than uh than we're certainly used to in that parish but it wasn't to the point where uh you need to believe that you know the the earth's eight thousand years old fossils that are put there by the devil type thing so so maybe mr dawkins has had his view painted a little bit too much by the nonsense over in america and if he actually came to English churches, he would find them a lot more reasonable, and the faith, in fact, isn't particularly nonsense. I mean, I, th I think that um, when you when you say you 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 you, you waver, I, I wanted to ask you when do you actually believe that Jesus had a, a virgin for a mother? Do you actually believe he rose from the dead? I, I suspect well, weirdly, you probably don't. since you ask, weirdly, I was th just three weeks ago at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, where m m the uh, the Christian the Christians believe that. Christ was crucified. And I have to admit that there is a real force and Christianity is palpable there. It almost, the place pulses with Christianity. But I certainly felt that Jesus was a historical figure. Yes, I, I did believe that. Well, so, I'm actually quite impressed she's uh, willing to share that, but what Ms Johnson had here was a genuinely religious experience. And when you have one of those, I've I had a few of them. I've been to pilgrimage to Lords. I've been on retreat, and you you can certainly have them. And the most common way, actually, that uh, atheists convert to some form of religion, including Christianity, is uh, taking DMT. I I mean, I've never taken it. I'm never going to take it. But plenty of studies have been done that people who have taken the psychedelic drug DMT do actually start believing in a in a higher power. And these can really change your life. I mean, if you don't take DMT and just have the religious experience, it can be a little harder to really know what to do with yourself. But as Rachel Johnson says here, she probably did feel some sort of connection to God, but doesn't really want to say that because she is part of the new elite and being any sort of religious person in the new elite is quite cringe so i think she wants to say yeah i did believe a bit in god but not say it to richard dawkins because that, that invites quite a lot of criticism from richard dawkins and i just don't think she wants it for this show which i can understand no no i mean that's that's quite different but do you believe that his mother was a, was a virgin well i mean maybe you, that was a mistranslation of <laughs> well that's biologically impossible isn't it of course it is yes yeah yeah, it is. That, that's kind of the point. Jesus did the impossible. The whole point is that he revealed he could do these impossible things to have people believe in him, believe he was the son of God. That was the point. And that's why pretty much every apostle, apart from maybe Judas, died as martyrs, saying to people, no, I saw Jesus resurrect from the dead. He is the son of God you must convert to Christianity. And obviously, if they don't, they move on. But still, an awful lot of the time they run into people that said, no, you can't say that. This is the higher being. If you are saying there is a another being higher than it, which is God, then we're going to kill you. And they said, no, this is what I saw. I have full faith in Jesus Christ. Do what you have to do. And, you know, St. Peter was crucified. Others had arrows stuck in them. These people died for what they saw. 
I, as I said at the start, it's well recorded. And realizing this is, I'd say, what helped me bring bring me closer to Christ and God, knowing that there were people that literally saw this and died for it, because there are very few people in the world that would die for some sort of lie, especially a ridiculous one. But no, they die for something that absolutely nobody is going to believe, which is that someone rose from the dead. And when 100% of people who eyewitnessed it and died for spreading that word are doing that, I mean, not one person, at least that we know of, saw Jesus and didn't die for spreading the word that he resurrected. Again, Richard Dawkins would just say, oh, you believe in all this? You're an idiot. Well, yeah, I do. And I don't think I am because of all the other evidence that you appear to be ignoring. I mean, yes, people misremember things, but people don't particularly die for things they misremember, as I say, especially when the multiple accounts seem to be saying very similar things. But I, I don't want to be misunderstood. I mean, I, I do think it's nonsense. But, uh, but um, the, the, the Christian belief, for the, for, I mean, today is Easter, and, and of course I don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, and I don't believe you do either. Um, do you? I mean, yeah, yes, I do, but it, again, it almost feels like a sort of soundness ceiling at this point from Richard Dawkins. He's been doing it for so long. No, I want to make it absolutely clear to everyone, I don't believe in this ridiculous, impossible miracle. That's obviously ridiculous. I, I guess, well done, you're like most people who weren't Christians throughout history. You know, this, this isn't a new revelation. It, it's the type of thing you could say and think you are higher than everyone else about. If you live in a country that is ridiculously Christian. But at this point, as they said at the start, Christianity is losing numbers in Britain. And uh, yeah, saying that a man died on a cross and then rose again three days later. You know, Muslims don't even believe that. They believe Allah came down and took Jesus off the cross and took him to heaven. Because no prophet can die. Yet nobody witnessed that. In fact, people witnessed the opposite. They witnessed him literally dying and having his side speared by a lance to let out blood and water which to a lot of physicians indicates that jesus died of a heart attack so yeah everyone was pretty sure that he died and then people literally died saying that i saw him rise from the dead i not just one or two people that this was hundreds so either christianity is one of the most ridiculously large and pointless conspiracy theories we have ever witnessed in our life or it really happened they are kind of the two choices i have come down upon when i've started to look into this a lot more meticulously in my you know older age after i <laughs> left uni and it seems a hell of a lot more reasonable to me that yeah god exists and jesus really did die and resurrect than it does that it's all just one big conspiracy theory despite the fact that i understand it is the completely rational position to think it's all malarkey again richard dawkins isn't he, he always looks smug when he says it, but it's nothing to be smug about. He's just like the rest of human history. Do I believe that Jesus rose from the dead? I mean, you're really putting me on the spot. I would like to believe he did. Yes, I, I mentioned yeah, the resurrection. Different. Again, got to feel quite bad for Rachel Johnson because, yeah, I imagine she is slowly actually c coming round to the realisation that she probably should go to church every week and have faith in Christ, which is quite a nice thing about this interview and actually a kind of white pilly moment i think we are going to see again more people going to church in the near future and i think a really big reason for it is simply and it might not be the best reason for people to go but i think it is simply because people are seeing secularism is inviting much worse morality and much worse religions into the gap that has been left by secularism the experiment is failing we can't have christians muslims Hindus, whatever, all trying to live together with each one trying to have an equal share in the religious views of the secular world. No, one has to come out on top. And as Richard Dawkins says, the arch-atheist, Christianity needs to win that. And since people are starting to realise it, I don't think it's actually going to take much convincing that, well, the best way to do that is just go to church once a week and give a bit of money to the church and possibly even to charity as well. I started doing it. I recently moved to Wales and I decided... I think it would be good to start a habit of trying to go to church. I, I think over the past seven months or so, I've become way more devout than I actually intended to be. I'm even starting to become a reader at my church simply because I, I don't want to dock, so I won't go into too much detail. 
but people at the church should uh, suggested I do it. And, well, this is the thing. Don't wait for a sign, just go. What that could be in a lot of people's minds, and in my mind's included, is a sign from God. I have talent for public speaking. I've got five years of YouTube experience. I'm, I'm quite good at pronunciating, at delivering messages, let's say. Why not do it for a congregation once every few Sundays? The church needs it. Why not do it and go in there as a <laughs> below 30-year-old? That's going to send one hell of a message, really, when you think about it. How many, how many people below 30 go to church? It's like 1% of Zoomers go to the Church of England. It's probably more for the Catholic faith. But just like going to a bar and thinking, should I have a Guinness or not? The main way people are going to be buying that Guinness is if they see someone else having a Guinness. I'm convinced it's the same thing with church. If they see other people their age, not really caring if it's cringe or not, and just going to church, I think that's going to help other people be inspired to go. And hell... If I've inspired any of you to go this Sunday or whatever, do let me know in the comments. I, I want to know if uh, I've helped convince you or not. And if not, let me know why. Seriously, let me know why. Because I think we all agree that Richard Dawkins is right. Atheism does not give you a sufficient moral framework to refute other religions. You can literally only fight fire with fire in this case. Christianity is going to be the bulwark against Islam. And from what everyone's seen of Christian and Islamic countries... People would prefer fundamentalist Alabama to Saudi Arabian Islam. Yeah, they don't have much theft there, sure, but uh, women don't exactly enjoy living there. Unless they're tourists, but uh, the Saudi Arabians are fine with the tourists because they give them money. When my son, my son was two, uh, we took him to church and um, it, the priest said, uh, you can ask me anything. And he said that my two-year-old son said, asked the priest, do you know Jesus to be true or do you believe Jesus to be true? To be, and then, and do you see what I mean? And he couldn't answer that question. Well, we know it in the same way that we know an awful lot of things in history through hearsay, through chronicles, and all these things can be bastardised by humans, sure. But the thing is, what are things that historians all believe? Or should I say no or should I say believe? I'm not sure. Historians, though, there is a consensus that Jesus was a real person. He was crucified on a cross. The resurrection side of things, that's a bit more iffy because at most 500 people witnessed it. But even I would struggle to answer that. Do I know Jesus exists or do I just believe it? I, I think I just believe it. I don't know if I can for sure say that I know he existed. Or oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. I know that he was the son of God and rose from the dead. I certainly do believe it, though. But again, it's it's in the same way of, you know, do, do I know Socrates existed or was a great philosopher or do I believe it? Because Socrates didn't write anything down. It was all written down by someone else. And is what they've written down exactly what he said? Well, that's going to be hard to say yes or no to. We're never going to know that. But obviously it's a lot more reasonable that Socrates was a philosopher who talked about his philosophy than it is to believe that Jesus was the son of God and rose from the dead. Obviously one's more rational and a much more believable story than the other. But as I say, when enough people are dying because they've witnessed a resurrection, at some point my brain just switches to, yeah, it did happen then. It must have. No one is going to be that deep into a conspiracy that they all die for it. And I know you might have the example of, oh, what about all these cults that, uh, you know, drank the Kool-Aid and whatever? Well, that was a bunch of followers who truly believed what their cult leader was saying, and he was lying about his revelations from God and all this. Because, yes, all these people committed suicide under Jim Jones's instructions, but Jim Jones killed himself because, well, he was caught out in leading a cult that was aiding the Soviet Union, was effectively an enemy of the United States, and he didn't want to carry on like that. Which is a little bit different to God has revealed his wise teachings to me and he tells us all to kill ourselves, isn't it? Just one thing. Does it matter if Christianity is a minority religion in this country? I think it matters from a cultural point of view. That's a very clear answer from you, Richard Dawkins. Yes, but it's wrong. Why would people continue to be culturally Christian if they don't believe in the core concepts of the faith? Why would people do what they do without a belief in Jesus and a belief that God is good and that they should build these grand temples, these cathedrals, these churches, 
in his name to to write books about him, to write hymns about him, to to study him and understand him. Why why would people do it if he didn't exist, if they didn't believe in him? Why does it only matter from a cultural point of view? The answer for Richard Dawkins is because he doesn't like anything else. That's it. That's the only reason. Honestly, if Richard Dawkins was born under Islam, I have no doubt in my mind that he would have been an imam or, or an Islamic scholar. But the reason he's gone the way he has done in the West is because he has had the complete freedom to do so. And he bastardised that gift, unfortunately, and now he's reaping the rewards. Just completely this meme. Me sowing, oh, this is great, I love this. Me reaping, wait, I didn't want this, what the hell? And Richard Dawkins is still at the reaping phase, yet he is still sowing the same thing. It's complete nonsense what they understand. Yes, I can understand that perspective. I too was agnostic. But it doesn't make you particularly clever or special saying that, oh, really, you believe in this stuff that's completely impossible? Again, that is the norm throughout human history. Well done. You're not a 200 IQ person for realising that... <laughs> Jesus did impossible things. That, that's kind of the point. He did impossible things to spread the faith and reveal himself as God. Anyway, if this hasn't helped and you've still managed to get this far, I have a small clip of a certain American pastor who has really helped me understand more of the answers to the questions I'm looking for when it comes to Christianity. The guy is called Cliff... Knetchel? I think I'm saying that right. And he's a pastor who, since at least the 90s, has been going to university campuses in America, literally just having conversations with students about Christianity. And I found him on TikTok, and he is actually a really good resource for understanding the Bible and the answers to a lot of common questions that atheists might have. And as I say, it helped me get close to God. I, I hope it will allow you to get closer too. So I'm going to leave you with a clip to end the stream, I am sure that Cliff will be fine with me cliffing it and putting it on here and sending it over to him, so uh, I'm doing the very risky, I'm pretty sure it'll be fine copyright issue here. However, there's only so much time I have to make these videos and I don't have time to ask him, so, uh, well, fingers crossed it's all for the best. If not, it's right at the end, I can take it out and you can just find the link in the description if it's gone. So with that, that's everything I had for you today. So once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a very happy Easter we're all going to win, and until next time, goodbye. The eyewitnesses of the resurrected Christ died claiming they had seen him risen from the dead. They, that's what they died for. The Roman Empire instituted emperor worship, and the first century followers of Christ said, no, we cannot sacrifice to the emperor on an altar, because Jesus is Lord, he has risen from the dead, and they died, not for a passionate belief. They died for what they claimed to have seen, the dead Christ risen from the dead. Well, sure, but I mean, you were talking about Koresh and uh, Jimmy Jones earlier. Yes. And I mean, in both of those cases, there are plenty of people who died because they claimed that that this person uh, was essentially the same as, as what Christ has been claimed. So just because people died for it, I don't see how that... Good question. The difference is the followers of Jones and Koresh did not die to cover up what they knew to be a lie. Your point, I thought, was historical fiction. They write this fiction totally aware of the fact it's fictitious. You will not get people to die to cover up what they know to be a lie. So in this case, I'm not saying that someone made up the story. What I'm saying is maybe they believed it, um, but just because they got a bunch of other facts right does not necessarily mean that that specific fact about, about the nature of Jesus is, is necessarily correct. Right. But you push the record back as far back as you can go, and you never come up against a non-supernatural Jesus who died and stayed dead. Right from the get-go, those first century eyewitnesses of Christ claimed, we saw Jesus risen from the dead. Peter stands up on the streets of Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost and says, you killed the Christ, God raised him from the dead. So you don't have this myth that grows up around Jesus. Right from the start, the claim is, he died, he rose from the dead, we saw it, you know it, this is the Christ we preach. Then those guys who talked that way stood before Roman soldiers, and the Roman soldiers said, worship the emperor and you can live, maintain that your Jesus is risen from the dead, that he is Lord and we'll kill you for it. And every single one of them said, Jesus is Lord, I've seen him risen from the dead. 
and they died for what they claimed to have seen. 